It's kind of like the kids in the back seat. They try to get just a little bit further back where there's no way I can reach. Put your hair in my hand. Now I'm on YouTube saying that. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, if first thing, order matter of business would be to uh, approve the the minutes and the uh, letters. Uh, do I see a motion from the last meeting? I'll move to approve the minutes and decision letters. We've got a motion to approve the minutes and the decision letters. Uh, any discussion? Or is there a second, actually? I second. Okay. That would there being a second, is there any discussion? Seeing none, let's move for a vote. All those in favor of approving the minutes and decision letters as written, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none. One, is, one abstention, Mr. Chairman. Thank since you. Since I wasn't here. First order of business is out of the way. So now we can move to the first matter that's on the agenda, which is 6719 Charlotte Pike, number six. Uh, is the applicant's representatives here? Or are the applicant's representatives here? Yes, they are. Y'all are welcome to come up to the table. With that, Ms. Penny, if you could read the, the opening statement. Our opening statement to the applicant. If you're not satis satisfied with the decision made by the Stormwater Management Committee, you may appeal the decision by filing for a writ of centuria with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the day of the committee's decision. You are advised to seek the independent advice of legal counsel to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been satisfied. Wonderful, thank you. With that, we'll turn it over to staff for a brief summary of the, uh, the request. This is case number 2018-0028-6719, Charlotte Pike, number six. Inspector Lee Nelson, APN 102110C00900CO, Council District 23, Mina Johnson. Case was previously deferred on November 1st, 2018. Variance request is to allow the following. Disturbance to the zone two buffer, including 1,194 square feet of impervious area, 735 square feet of pervious pavers, 1,190 square feet for bioretention areas, and 645 square feet of grading and the slopes. Applicant's request is to allow the following. A total of 2,248 square foot disturbance to the zone two stream buffer. The total 2,248 square foot disturbance consists of 287 square foot of rooftop, 672 square foot of pervious pavers, and 1,289 square foot of bio retention. The appellant is Camille Daok with Magnolia Properties. Representative is Michael Garrigan of Dell & Associates. Stormwater staff has no comments. Codes, no comments provided. Planning, the trees shown on the landscape plan for the variance should be a minimum of two inches in size. In greenways, uh, they defer to the decision of the Stormwater Management Committee. Thank you so much. That will turn it over to the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Michael Garrigan, Dale and Associates, 516 Heather Place. Um, I want to, I guess, clarify our requests. Um, within our most recent package, which is different than what you saw last month, we have lost a unit uh, or removed a unit. Um, so the, the areas of disturbances are significantly less. Um, if you have the two-page handout that has existing and proposed, you can see on the, the first sheet that's existing, there's about 6,000 square feet of impervious surface that's currently within the zone one and zone two buffers. Um, on this property, part of it is driveway, part of it is a tennis court back in the back. Um, at least I assume it's a tennis court. And the second sheet shows um, that impervious, we are only pr are requesting 287 square feet, which is a portion of the rooftop of unit five, which th that compared to the 6,000 square feet of what exists today, 
uh, the rest of the disturbances that we are requesting, and they're all in the zone two, there's nothing in the zone one. Um, the rest of the disturbances requested are for bioretention and pervious pavers, uh, so they could be considered um, pervious encroachments. Um, in addition to that, we still have the same mitigation plan that we had last month where um, we're heavily planting the zone two buffer. The zone two buffer really doesn't exist today. It's, it's a driveway um, mowed and maintained lawn and then, like I said, the tennis court back in the back. Um, this was a very, um, we do a lot of zoning at my company and, and this was one that, that took a lot of effort and a lot of time um, working with the neighborhood and getting to a point where everybody was happy, including Council Lady Johnson, who's still in, in support of this project. Um, and that zone two just kind of came up after the fact, and we've done our best to work around it. Uh, we feel like by removing that unit, the project's still a, a viable project, still a feasible project. Um, I know that's not what, what you necessarily consider, but. Uh, we can still make it work, and we feel like we've got a great plan here that proposes new development, new infill development on this property that takes a buffer that's not necessarily in existence but improves it significantly um, and removes um, about 5,400 square feet of existing impervious. You can see that's the existing driveway on the screen now. Um, as you pull into the property, that's right in the middle of the zone two. Part of it's in the zone one. Um, and then it, that's the waterway itself. And that's the driveway facing to the back. So uh, that's kind of all I have. Um, again, we, we did remove one unit, so we removed a significant part of the most significant part of our request from last month, and um, we'd ask for your support. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'll uh, turn, uh, is there anyone from the, here from the public to speak either in favor of uh, uh, the project or opposed to the variance request? Seeing nothing in opposition nor in favor of, we'll turn to the committee for uh, discussion and questions to the ap applicant. Okay. Um, tell me about the porous paving material that you're using. What, what's the what's the aggregate type that you're using, and uh, what what is it? Is it concrete? Is it s pavers? It's it's uh, concrete pavers. Yes, sir. precast concrete pavers. Yes, sir. okay, okay. I saw some kind of reference to asphaltic type pavers. Um, Did I read that wrong? The, uh, I'm not sure, um, but the detail that I sent the contractor at, that he requested yesterday was for papers. Okay, okay, good deal. And uh, is there, what was your reasoning behind not putting the bioretention in the, um, what's described on one of these diagrams as an undisturbed area? Could you not move your bioretention or could you not create a new bioretention cell to make up for the portion of the bioretention cell that's in the zone two by putting a new cell in in an undisturbed area just looks like just south of that last parking pad. Yeah. That, that's, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but that's on the high side of the site. So it would be fighting grade to get up there. So those, um, those lots drain towards the street and not towards the creek back to the right and behind it? They all drain to the east, and the high point is in the back of the it's site. In the back, okay. Okay. So this uh, this map has the contours. Yes. Sir. Okay. It's, and that is, uh, even though it, it, I guess it's labeled as undisturbed. On, I'm not sure which drawing you're looking at, but it. That's right where the tennis court slash basketball court okay. exists today. Right. Staff okay with the buffer plantings? Okay. 
I was going to say I appreciate um, you listening to the comments from last time and going back and evaluating it and presenting this plan. It's um, look much more what we were looking for. Thank you. Any discussion, questions for the applicant? <coughs> No, I agree with Carrie. They did what we asked and uh, have removed the, exist the, the additional building from the Zone 2 buffer and are greatly improving the lot and the stream um, buffer and barrier. So. Yeah, I'll make a motion, uh, given the fact that there was a lot of discussion on this uh, project uh, last month, and so we're all familiar with it. There hasn't been a need for a lot today, I think. Is, uh, and uh, given the hardships of the property, the circumstances under which uh, we're here today, uh, given the applicant and the the procedurally procedural circumstances they went through, uh, I'm in favor of um, uh, granting uh, the request uh, as requested. Uh, again, based on the hardships of the property and the improvements that are being made to what's existing. Anyway. I'll second that. So there's been a motion and a second to approve as um, requested. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, let's take a vote. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we may uh, jump order just a bit. Uh, is the fourth applicant here, uh, Harmony at Bellevue? One of our staff isn't here yet. Okay, well, then that's not an option. Um, so we will move uh, to the second matter. Uh, I've been uh, already informed that Mrs. Stokes has to recuse herself on this one. Uh, so that was the purpose of going out of order. But if that doesn't work, it doesn't work. So we'll go ahead and call the second applicant, which is Cumberland Landing uh, Expansion. And uh, were both of you gentlemen here when we read the opening statement? Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, we can skip that then and move straight to a summary of the uh, request. Thank you, Chairman. Steve Mishu, Metro Water. Uh, case number 2018-00029 is Cumberland Landing Expansion at Zero Aubrey Mills Drive. It's uh, parcel number 73-000-039-00. That's Council District 15, Jeff Syracuse. Uh, the inspector is Donald Irves. The applicant's, applicant's request is the following, disturbance of the floodway buffer disturbance of the stream buffer, continuous mowing and maintenance, disturbance of the floodway buffer for permanent SEMs, a bioretention area. The appellant is Opry, Mill, Opry Land Attraction, uh, being represented by Jeff Cundiff with Barge Design Solutions. Uh, stormwater staff comments. Staff requests that if a variance is approved that the long-term maintenance plan include a provision that the bioretention area be inspected and maintained as needed after the Cumberland flood events due to its being location in a flood prone area. Codes has no comments. Planning, the site is zoned CA. They defer to stormwater for review. Greenways, Greenways defers to the decision of the stormwater management committee. Thank you. Thank you. With that, I'll turn it to the applicant for its presentation. Thank you. Uh, appreciate your time today and uh, willingness to hear us. Uh, what we have here today is an existing building on the Opry Lane campus uh, it's an adaptive reuse project uh, where we're coming in. This building's been setting empty since the 2010 flood, and uh, we've got a great opportunity here to revitalize it and use the existing infrastructure uh, that's in place uh, to put this project back back to life and, and really bring a destination uh, restaurant to, to Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, so the exist, as you see, um, now that it's pulled up here, the existing building and uh, development around it is all currently within the buffer. So in order for the applicant here to utilize this property uh, and, and have a viable project here, they need to expand the building to have enough square footage for, uh, for the proposed use. The, the building itself is above the 100-year floodplain and several feet above it. Um, there's a crawl space below that will be designed per all the regulations uh, for uh, allowing water to flow in and out. As part of this project, we are um, 
proposing to improve that buffer and uh, we're providing buyer retention. We are pro we have proposed 53% uh, more buyer retention than what is required per code. Um, and then we have also found the opportunity to remove 800 cubic feet of storage out of the floodplain to allow for additional um, storage in there. We have uh, worked with staff and we've talked with Jeff Syracuse and uh, gained his support for this project and uh, are here today looking for yours. We also went ahead and conducted a no-rise study on the Cumberland River to ensure that whatever was proposed here did not have any impact on the Cumberland River flooding for any of the neighbors or anyone else. Uh, we also proposed installing pervious pavers on a portion of the sidewalk where we found available and um, basically we're going to be able to enhance and utilize what's there today to create this new attraction. Uh, I'm glad to answer any questions you may have. Um, yeah, thank you for your time. Is anyone here from the public to speak in opposition to or in favor of um, the proposed request? Seeing none, we'll turn it over to um, the committee for discussion and questions to the applicant. This is where the General Jackson picks up and drops off. Is that where this is? Just, just south of it. It used to be used for the ticket office, and the new ticket office is just to the north of where it is. But that is the General Jackson's dock there. Okay, that's what I thought. Yes. And what is the attraction? You said dinner, but what's the? It's uh, a Paula Deen's family kitchen. Is there not a flood wall along? No, sir. This is out. The flood wall is just north of where the General Jackson is, and it runs to the east directly, directly through the mall. This is on uh, effectively high ground in this area. There's a transition as you're in the mall, as you walk past that Johnny Rockets that, that steps down, and yeah. that's where you walk over the flood wall. So the wall used to surround Opry land, and now it's? No. Uh, this, well, when it was redeveloped um, with the mills, this area was filled to be on high ground. Mm. Higher ground. <laughs> yes, sir. Not high enough. <laughs> the last flood. Yeah. Okay, um, you know, I, I, I guess I'm trying to wrap my head around what's changing vegetatively. Is anything vegetatively changing? There, there is a little vegetation uh, that's uh, where the addition is. Mm -hmm. um, Basically, landscaping trees. Yeah, you, is that they're fair? like magnolias? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're we're really not this proposal is is really not getting into. Uh, a naturalized buffer. It's it's putting a building on top of what is um, kind of urban landscaped. I would sites. I would believe you're right, and unless Rebecca corrects me, I think the area that's more preserved is the area between this building and the dock. Okay. Am I characterizing that appropriately, Rebecca? Okay. So I, you know, I, um, it, it it sounds like all we're doing. All you're proposing to do is to um, create a structure there as opposed to urban landscaping that, that typically is raised off the ground that sheds water that doesn't absorb a lot of water. Mm -hmm. and, and you're proposing to remove some, to do a cut to compensate for this. Mm -hmm. Does it fully compensate for it? I, oh, we're, we don't have any fill that's proposed in the floodplain. This is a, just, we're just creating you're additional just, storage because yeah. we found the opportunity to exactly. do so. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're not really replacing it that's lost. You're adding extra storage. Yeah. Okay. All right. What's the blue area? The blue area is the off-site stormwater that we're able, we found a way to capture and also treat um, that, that wouldn't be required typically under... Uh, the redevelopment of this project. But a portion of the building is going to go into zone one. The existing building is in the zone one buffer, yes ma'am, and there is, and so the proposed expansion would also be a portion of it in the zone one, yes. It's 
the back probably five feet or so. It varies, but. How many square feet in the zone one would be new? Of total disturbance? Yes, sir. Total disturbance is around 10,000 square feet, which includes the fire retention areas that we're creating. So, I mean, if we didn't put those in, we wouldn't be disturbing in that area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I probably shouldn't have asked total disturbance. The building specifically, because I assume your cut's going to be in that disturbance area as well, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't have that exact number. Um, I can try to calculate it real quick, though. Can you do that real quick? Yeah. And while he does that, the, the zone one is slightly above the red. There is, um, there is a line on your plans before you that may be slightly faint on the, on the monitor. So you're saying the red zone is not completely accurate that we're looking at? It should be wider? No, no, no. I'm saying it's. Uh, I'm saying everything's accurate. I'm just saying, as far as the location of the zone one, uh -huh. in case it wasn't clear, I was just pointing out okay. the the demarcation area okay. for it. Yeah, the okay. zone two is the darker one. Where we're getting the kind of vanilla like hand sweeping across the screen there. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry to compare you with that 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 example, but okay. Dot, it's approximately a thousand square feet. Thousand square feet. Okay. How high is the Elevated patio above the ground. It's at elevation 420. It's the same as the finished floor, elevation 423.7, which the existing grade is roughly at, so it's about 10 feet up in there. Can you plant anything below there? Um, we are planning on planting at the corners where we think we can get some good light down there uh, in the buyer attention areas. And I don't, I'm sort of coming on the end of this, but I'm, this is just a question to staff, just out of curiosity. I know there was a council bill passed recently that dealt with my, like th this side of the Cumberland River on Miami Avenue and all up through there. Does that not affect this? Uh, no, sir. I think those uh, were st strictly for residential. So lots. it says just residential. Right. Okay. And what was? The, how did it restrict residential again? Um. So I believe I have you have the bill in front of you. That's I fantastic. I mean, it's just strange to me. I mean, uh, I know that's what I'm wrestling with. Too. Yeah, I mean, I can't build anything over here. But the I'll bill do added it. new section 1564175 to the to the Metro Code to Chapter 1564, the Stormwater Chapter. It says residential development along the Cumberland. So Steve's right; it's exclusive to residential. Along the Cumberland River, there shall be preserved a 50-foot buffer as measured from the floodway. No new residential structure may be built within this floodway buffer. And two, building within the Cumberland River floodway buffer may continue to the extent permitted by section 1564.170. So 1564.170 was the general provision about prohibiting construction in the floodway. Um, uh, uh, and um, that had a number of exceptions to it. So those same ex exceptions to building within the floodway um, would be applicable to the floodway buffer. So the zone one buffer, right? It just says a 50 foot buffer. Right, yeah. and, and so I mean, it's just that, you know, we seem to have struggled so much in this area and there just seems to be an inconsistency to me. That zone one is 50 foot, just like it is so yes, there, there was some discussion in the um, the recitals of the um, the bill, um, kind of clarifying why it was specific to residential, um, and talking about um, um, access by emergency workers um, uh, to, to people um, who would be in danger, like you know if there was an event in the, at night, you know, and people were sleeping. So. So, Jeff, hearing what you're hearing, is there any way you could shift things out of the zone one? Um, the building itself, um, I don't think we could achieve the square footage required to support the, the project. Uh, the, I mean, because the existing building is in the zone one buffer. Um, it's the challenge there. I will say, Roy, I'm not sure if you heard, but we did meet with 
Jeff Syracuse regarding this project because we knew this was an important topic to him and had these conversations and gained his support. So, uh, well, I mean, I came in late, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to support your variance. I, I am personally going to support it, but there's just an inconsistency that I wanted to talk about. I, whether that's right or wrong, I just wanted to talk about it. And I think the fact that legal was able to dis describe the reasons why, I think that that's a, probably gives this committee the ability to to maybe grant this, because I think what Jeff's concern was more residents, danger, you know, this is a commercial building. But I still wanted to mention it, okay? I just I just wanted to throw it out there, because I think it's somewhat important. Uh, I, I didn't necessarily support what Jeff did. I mean, I, I, I know I didn't, but um, I just wanted to throw it out there. Just couldn't keep it inside of myself, okay? <laughs> just couldn't control myself this morning. <laughs> so. Uh, on this particular project, I believe if this was a brand new standalone building and not a repurpose or an addition to, I think our comments would be, or our recommendation would be totally different also. I mean, the number of, um, the area of the existing building in zone one is limited um, to whatever that um, back little area is mm -hmm. in the middle of it. But the addition is a lot in, to zone one. You've added in the front corner, the cor filled in the corner there, and things like that. So I'm struggling with building in zone one. I know it, that is limited re residential, but we have really tried not to have any buildings. So, I mean, the provisions of the stormwater management manual with regard to zone one are un unaffected by Syracuse's bill with regard to non residential. Yeah, we still have a standing regulation, is what you're saying, a standing ordinance. Yeah. Well, it's not part of the ordinance, but it is, you know, the ordinance basically allows the creation of the regulations of the stormwater management manual. And, and so those regulations um, are, are created pursuant to authority in the code, but they are not part of the code. They are not an ordinance of council. They are regulations. Okay. Just like departmental rules or <coughs> regulations under legislative law. Yes, they're okay. created by the Department of Water Services. Um, they go through an extensive change management process um, approved by the director and by the mayor. Okay. All right. So, uh, it, yeah, I'm, I'm struggling a bit with this. Um, you know, uh, buffers are rare. Restaurant property is not. Um, restaurant property options are much more available than buffer options, uh, particularly the ones that we're losing every day just due to um, hydrologic changes in the system from all the watershed changes that are going on. Um, a lot of people don't know, you know, buffers sit at a specific elevation in relation to the stream, and as the stream gets more and more water, the greater the stream drops, which eventually is going to erode away the banks of the buffer and create more and more instability. So having healthy trees and healthy watersheds, they kind of go together in these buffer areas. So adding more, uh, creating uh, more openings to develop this site uh, sends a, uh, a, a really strong signal that uh, more people should apply for variances to build restaurants and buffers. So with that... Uh, can, I, um, can I offer uh, maybe an alternative? Well, yeah, we're, um, we're eager to the, hear them. W you know, I heard the question regarding the planting and the zone one buffer, and I think there's an opportunity maybe for us to reduce a portion of the, the outdoor patio and enhance the buffer in that zone. Maybe we could remove 25% or so in it and then be able to replant that buffer densely um, to reestablish that portion of it and still maintain the life safety requirements for getting people out of this building. Um, I, I just, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just don't see what the hardship is um, it, to, to grant the variance, to build in zone one. Um, I mean, you need this square footage for this concept, mm -hmm. but you could build into zone two and have a different concept and still be able to repurpose the building. So I don't see what the hardship is in building in zone one. 
Uh, for <clears throat> I'll give you a minute to discuss. Mr. Condon. Yes, sir. Um, I, I'm having a difficult time seeing the hardship and with this property. It seems to me that you could do a lot with this property and this, this isn't necessarily what needs to be done. And there is no doubt a longstanding um, rule of thumb that we just don't let buildings go into zone one, period. Mm -hmm. um, and existing buildings in zone one is one thing, but when you start expanding into zone one and there is other opportunity. That being said, you, would you like an opportunity to defer this um, or would you just like us to take a vote? Because I, it seems where this thing's going. Yeah. Can we uh, agree at this moment to remove the building expansion on the on the right side? Uh, out of the zone one buffer uh, and and us figure out a way to to reconfigure some of the other site elements to make the square footage work for the user I'm not going to be inclined to agree with that I mean okay. I, to me I'd rather see a deferral and come back with an actual drawing um, so I, I'm probably not going to vote for that although the other committee members may have a different opinion okay. That's it. I agree I mean uh, I don't know that 30 days or whatever is going to be the end of the world. I mean, I think it'd be much better to come back uh, with a revised plan uh, to try to incorporate some of the concerns of the committee. Okay. Well, thank you. We would like to request a deferral. All right. There are applicants requested deferral. All those in favor of granting say aye. Oh, but we, can we have a little discussion on yeah, the motion? Yeah, <laughs> so, Sorry. Um, <laughs> we, we, got a, we got a zone two here, right? I uh, know. I figured that as I was yeah. talking, sir. <laughs> okay. We, well, I, you know, I just don't want the applicant to waste their time if they're also going to have, if we're also going to have concerns about the zone two, because we just heard a case. Very valid. Just heard a case where we had buildings in the zone two that were moved out, one building that was moved out. Uh, of the previous proposal and with uh, very little disturbance to the zone two. So I, I'm not sure they're going to be able to even meet the standard we just passed in the previous case. So, it, you know, one of the things I was taught in graduate school was people deserve prior expectation about their investment opportunities. And this is an expectation that I just want you to know before you go spell, spend lots of billable time uh, as the owner and you as billable time toward this project as opposed to another project where you can continue it uh, with less resistance, you know, that's a factor in your consideration of your, whether or not you want to invest more energy in this. So just FYI. Yeah, I'll go ahead and make the statement. I mean, when I see this site, I see a lot of blue area that's not in either zone. Um, and although you're claiming that as, you know, to, as a better bio, uh, you know, as, as better treatment area, that, that's also, you know, you can change the shape of the building. Um, and it, you can build a new building up there and take everything out of the zones, quite frankly. Um, and I know that may not be the most cost-effective cost effective, uh, option, but it, it does appear to be an option to us. And so we're going to, that's the way we're looking at it. And we, and we can be convinced otherwise, perhaps, but we do want to let you know that's what we see. Thank you. Uh, okay, can I get a motion? The, the applicants asked for a deferral. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll second the deferral. Oh, and you need a motion first. I, oh, I, th I thought, oh, you were asking for a motion. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'll move for deferral and uh, encourage the applicant to think hard and long about what they come back with. So, so the applicant has 30 days, mm -hmm. a 30 day referral. There's a motion on the table. Do I see a second? Second. We've got a motion on the table. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor of granting a 30 day deferral, say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. It's granted. Thank you. Madam Council, I just want to let you know Roy and I were talking about our Thanksgiving dinner over here. We were, we were not talking about the case. So. <laughs> we were whispering over here.
Okay, let's move on to the next matter on the agenda, which is um, Century Farms Roadway and Mass Grading Plan. Is the applicant here and ready? Wonderful. And um, when we read the uh, opening statement, were both of you two gentlemen here? Yes, I actually had to step out. Okay, well, let's, let's read it again so we follow all the rules. Thank you. Our opening statement to the applicant. If you're not satisfied with the decision made by the Stormwater Management Committee, you may appeal the decision by filing for a writ of centuria with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the committee's decision. You are advised to seek the independent advice of legal counsel to assure that your appeal is filed within a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been satisfied. Thank you very much. With that, we'll turn it over to staff uh, for a brief summary of the request. Case number 2018000030, Century Farms, Roadways and Mass Grading, located at 0 Cane Ridge Road. Uh, the council district is uh, Representative Jacoby Adal, council district number 32. Um, all that? Give you light. <clears throat> no. Case was granted a preliminary SW uh, stormwater SWM plan approval only on March 1st, 2018, under case 2018-0004 to allow number one, disturbance to the stream buffers, disturbance to the wetland buffers, and number three, disturbance to the wetlands. The applicant request is the following. Disturbance to the stream buffers, disturbance to the wetland buffers, and disturbance to the wetlands. Uh, the appellant is David Young with Century Farms, LLC. The representative is Jeff Cundiff from Barge Design Solutions. And the comments are as follows. From stormwater staff, this submittal appears to contain disturbances not covered in the preliminary hearing. The mitigation plan provided does not appear to compensate for the proposed resource loss. Ash trees should not be used in the mitigation plan due to the current emerald ash borer infestation issue. Also, the ARAP, stream, and wetlands impact do not appear to match what is on the proposed plans. Codes did not have a comment. Planning requested the variance is consistent with the approved SP site plans. Greenways defers to Stormwater Management Committee. Thank you very much. With that, we'll turn it over to the applicant. Yeah, thank you. Um, Rebecca, would you mind just pull up our plan? Thank you very much. Um, just a little recap. Uh, we were here earlier in the year. Uh, this is a uh, proposed public infrastructure project, uh, a joint project between Public Works and Century Farms LLC. Uh, yes, the objective of this is to reduce. Okay, we don't need this anymore. And Thank you. I thought I was still turned on. Do I need to restart? I, we no. can all hear okay. you. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, so this project's required to connect the interchange, which is under construction, to the local roadway network, uh, and then also help facilitate development within uh, this side of town. Uh, this this property is relatively unique because it essentially sits out on an island. It's bound by to the north by the interstate. And then it's got a tributary to Collins Creek that surrounds the property. So in order for us to connect back to the existing roadway network, we are we're required to uh, make some minimal impacts to the existing uh, environmental features. Uh, it's also constrained vertically. There's roughly 150 feet from the interchange down to the creek, that, and we're bound by 
limited road grades. Um, we've worked really hard to uh, minimize the impacts of this proposed plan. Uh, originally, there was uh, a much higher density proposed on this site, uh, and it had, that has been significantly reduced, saving uh, about 1,800 linear feet of impacts to the streams. Um, we've found the opportunity to preserve uh, 11 acres of uh, buffers along the existing stream, and we've also looked for opportunities to enhance those buffers um, and restore ones that, that maybe needed some restoration. Uh, along with the mitigation that was mentioned before, um, this project is going to be purchasing 840 uh, stream credits from the Cumberland River Compact, uh, hoping to uh, implement those projects here locally in Davidson County. Uh, and then there's also going to be one and a half wetland credits that are also going to be purchased and it would equate to roughly a half a million dollars worth of uh, mitigation that's going to be uh, also in, in addition to the stuff that we have found the opportunity to do on this site. Uh, I want to go ahead and uh, you want to speak a little bit about the water quality? Uh, sure. uh, Dave Core with BDY Environmental. Uh, we've been working with Barge and Century Farms LLC on the site since about 2014. Um, and as part of this, have identified the wetland areas and evaluated the, the quality um, and, and the streams. So when we conducted our assessment of, of the streams, they scored low on uh, the rapid bioassessment protocol. In this eco region, a score of 134 is the cutoff for low quality, and, and one was a uh, in the area of one of the crossings, it was a 126, and then the other one a 118, so we're below that threshold for uh, low quality. Um, using the, the TRAM method of assessing the wetlands, uh, it's a score out of 100, and 44 is the cutoff, the, the highest point for low quality, and, and these all scored between a 17 and a 19. So um, in terms of the wetlands, we're talking about very low quality. There's limited resource value associated with these features. They're in, have been in historic agricultural settings and have been impacted by cattle grazing and uh, other agricultural activities for some time. So the function at this point is, is mostly limited to local infiltration, um, very little nutrient processing, very little habitat. Um, and from our perspective, uh, most of the functions will be performed on site by uh, the, any kind of stormwater provisions that are associated with the development in terms of infiltration um, and will probably be augmented on site. Um, in addition to what Dave said, I wanted to directly address uh, stormwater's comments. Um, so we, we came in here, uh, I believe in January, uh, I wanted to get this in front of y'all as early as we could. And since then, a lot of activities occurred. We, we worked really hard to minimize the impacts on the site and try to preserve as much of it as possible. The, the reason that some of this stuff has changed is because we have been working closely with the core and TDAC and completing uh, additional Sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> Additional site visits with them, and basically we've had to, we have updated the current jurisdictional features, and that's the reason for the change. From that one, so some of them went away, some of them got added, and some of them were on the fence, and we went ahead and included the ones that were on the fence. Um, so that's the reason that it changed from the preliminary. What, what were the disturbances in the preliminary? I know it was this crossing, correct? Correct. It's that and same it crossing. This wetland as it well. Was a, there was a different wetland there, okay, that's and the it flip flopped. So okay. we had. <laughs> so, but generally in the same area. And uh, so these these are new, and these are new. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah, and so uh, and to the comment about the mitigation plan, uh, I believe I've addressed that already, but I'm glad to have further discussion or answer any questions regarding that. Um, and then relative to the ARAP stream and wetland impacts do not appear to match the proposed on those plans. Uh, that's, that's why we provided this additional exhibit. The wetland that you were just pointing to, Rebecca, down in the bottom left, that one was off our initial submittal, so that one has been added, and that's the one that was somewhat on the fence, whether it was 
needed or not, so we wanted to go ahead and add it. Um, and then the stream buffer impacts, uh, the reason uh, they don't match is we're asking, because we're, we're asking for a buffer disturbance, and we also have grading that, that goes outside of the TDEC requirements for where the culvert length is. Um, all these culverts have been designed with open bottoms uh, so we can maintain the bed and bank of these stream features. Uh, and uh, with that, I believe that answers the questions that were, that were previously provided. Anything else? I think that's it. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Is anyone here from the public uh, speak in opposition to or in favor of uh, the requested variance? Seeing none, we'll turn it over to the committee for questioning and discussion. There were some. Um, oh, thank you. There was an email sent, and I think it was sent to um, all of you from Councilwoman Dial, and she's in favor of the project. And I also received an email early this morning from um, the Mill Creek uh, Watershed Organization. And they're stating that after reviewing the proposed plans and related publicly available documents, all of the wetlands are considered to be low quality from previous ag agricultural land uses. Overall, the proposed development has performed due diligence. The proposed plans maintain, excuse me, the proposed plans maintenance requires stream buffers and utilize open bottom culverts for the stream crossing. The MCWA recommends the development to use on-site mitigation for the impact wetlands instead of off-site mitigation banking. Thank you. Anything else? Any other comments from the public? Seeing none, then we will turn to uh, the committee for questioning the applicant and then also discussion. Okay, um, to the question of why you're, you're using off-site, what, are there options for on-site mitigation? Or is it just, is it more convenient to work with a bank? Because of the grades that we're dealing with, there, it is actually pretty limited on-site. There's pretty shallow rock out here and a lot of karst, and so uh, in terms of holding hydrology, it would be a, a very engineered system and not a, a natural system at all to try to do any kind of mitigation on-site. Um, we, we did look at, at potential opportunities, and there really isn't any area on-site that lends itself well to, to that kind of work. Um, and because of the change in grades that's required, um, none of the features, I think, we were talking about the amount of cut and fill and, and you know, some of these in order to, to achieve these, the, the grades necessary based on the constraints by the TVA power line, the existing roadways, and, and the interchange. Uh, I mean, we're talking 25, 50 feet of, of grade difference from, from where we are now, and, and uh, it, it would be a, a difficult at best to, to try to achieve on site. So I, I, I'll just make a point. This is kind of like arguing about the sky being blue, but uh, you know, every applicant that comes to us um, that has a disturbance with a wetland or a stream buffer that's missing trees describes it as a low grade uh, resource. And uh, it's probably not commonly known that most mitigation sites start as low-grade natural resources. <laughs> and without those low-grade natural resources, you have no place to go to mitigate damages to other so-called low-grade or high-grade resources. Uh, so the, the ratios tend to go higher in restoring the low-grade sites to make up for the high-grade sites that we're developing. So I just want to point that out, that that's, the public gets a, an impression that we're dealing with something that doesn't have value. It doesn't have value because it hasn't been restored. So. So we do make trade-offs, so considering the trade-offs, what does staff feel about uh, the mitigation proposed? We've got quite a bit of disturbance here, which typically goes along with these types of public works partnership projects because we're, when you're dealing with something that's constructed linearly, you're gonna have lots of linear impact. So do you all feel like we've got adequate mitigation given the realities of what we're facing here? I think they have provided a plan. I think our concern was the type of tree that was part of that 
plan for extra vegetation? Yeah, sorry, I failed to mention that prior. We were going to remove the ash tree from the plantings and just redistribute the rest of the species uh, with that same density. That's our proposal. We also don't see the best result from bare root seedling plantings. They tend to get overwhelmed by the existing vegetation around them and they don't survive. So um, we typically encourage larger plantings um, to get a buffer that would last. Did you receive that comment early enough to consider it? Uh, not the larger plantings comment. Okay. But. No, I believe we just said we did not feel it was adequate and did not go into specifics. Didn't go into specifics, okay. So, um, but I have seen other plans where we have like a two inch minimum, is that right? We like somewhere in between. Okay, okay. <laughs> the, two, the two inch trees usually cut, uh, require a lot of watering and care and sometimes okay. don't survive either, and especially if they're done in an area that trucks can't get to actively to okay. care for them. So how do y'all feel about that addition? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Okay. All right. Well, um, seeing that the we have a a conservation group that is uh, involved in the conservation of the Cumber River Basin and mm -hmm. the repairing restoration projects that are managing the mitigation bank that will create the credits for this project, I'll move to accept their proposal as presented with the modification of meeting staff's recommendations on the proper caliper size of trees and removal of the ash tree from the distribution of native species. I'm extremely suspicious of the origin of that email. <laughs> An environmental group that's in favor of <laughs> the project. No, they, God, I need, frankly, I, I've never heard I that need to before. restate that. They did not send an email supporting it, but they are running the bank <laughs> that these mitigation credits are gonna be Right? Did no, I hear you I, say Cumber River Compact? The email to yeah, but isn't that a different group that sent? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, the second one was from the watershed. Yeah, that's a different group. But, but yeah. you're doing your, you're not doing both the Cumber River Compact, right? The stream credits is from one. What about the wetland banking or the wetland credits? It's from the swamp road mitigation bank. Okay. Exactly. Two different ones. And so okay. where is that exactly? It's in Williamson County. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Is that okay, Don? I mean, it's not okay, but he just said they didn't have uh, the sites because of the grades. And, and we did look for some local options. We, um, as part of the, we, we approached the people doing the master plan for the Mill Ridge Park that's uh, across the interstate right. to try to see if there were some opportunities yeah. that we could do something over there. And they didn't have anything either. So we, and we did kind of look a, around for other opportunities in, in Antioch if, if there were some retrofits or something else that we could do to help offset and nothing else came up during that surge. So, so let's say that something just came up. I mean, you're going through your design and then there's an opportunity. Is there some kind of flexibility that would allow them to either buy the wetland credits or to mitigate in the area? I mean, in our, in our approval, in our well, we, we've had similar cases in the past, I think at Metro Center, where mitigation had to be done in Rutherford County. Um, um, All I'm saying is that in, in the event that something comes up, there's another development in the area, there's an opportunity to do mitigation in this area, would they not be given the, the chance to do that without having to come back to this committee? I, I don't know about that, but I, I can okay. tell you that ecologically, it's always better for Davidson County not to give up ecological functions to Rutherford County if they could keep them. Well, that's my point. <laughs> is there anything, to, if we pass the variance as you motioned, is there anything that would prevent them if they decided to, if there was an opportunity? Oh, okay. Depends on how it's written in here. Is it just so off-site off credits or just specific off-site well, credits? I, I, I would accept an amendment to my motion that they have that flexibility. Yeah, that, they, that they, they have the ability to it. purchase off-site credits or do mitigation okay. within this general geographic area. I mean, is that, is that acceptable? Uh, and okay. it provides you some flexibility, mm -hmm. but also provides us an opportunity perhaps. And so I would like to add that to the motion somehow. That, that in a, uh, well, we, we don't have a second. I'll second your motion. Okay, okay. and then <clears> I <throat> guess and Mr. Chairman, can he make a motion to amend my motion or? 
Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. I think that's the best way to do so it. So I, I, I would ask that we amend the motion to allow the applicant the flexibility to either purchase wetland credits or to do mitigation within the, this geographic area. I'll second that motion. All right. So we've got a motion on the table. Um, I want to make sure I understand. The green on the map, that is improvements to stream buffers? The dark green and the light green are areas where we found uh, opportunities to improve the buffer. The, the middle green color, the, the majority is the existing buffer that we're maintaining. And just to show how we're trying to minimize the impact. So no variance request on that? The blue down there in the right, bottom right, that's the same thing that we approved last time. No change there. Right. The <coughs> orange and yellow are low quality, I understand the issue with that, wetlands yeah. uh, that are going to be disappearing. Yes, sir. And then what's the blue, yeah, what's the blue up there? Those are small streams that are disappearing due to the, the grades and working out the, the tie-ins with the interstate interchange project in this site. Yeah, where do they go now? I mean, they would die, they just die into the interstate? They just get, they go into pipes that go into the interstate. Okay. So it's not really a... It's pipes without bottoms too, right? Those, no, no we're not... No, those are just typical culverts that go into the existing culverts okay, that go into the interstate. Because you can't do that three-sided culvert in that kind of... No, situation. we're not doing any work in there. Yeah, it's existing under the interstate now. Okay. Uh, there's a motion. Any other discussion or questions for the outcome? And this is a motion on the amendments, Mr. Chairman, to amend my original motion. Okay, so right now there's a motion to amend. Uh, vote the, on that first and then vote on the, the approval motion, motion as amended. Which would allow um, the applicant to purchase... Uh, the offsite credits as proposed were then also provide for app, the, uh, equivalent mitigation somewhere else in Davidson County as approved by staff. Yes. Sir. So that's the motion. Uh, any discussion on that motion? Seeing none in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none. All right. So now the motion on the table is to approve the variance request uh, as requested with the exception that the applicant has the option of uh, providing for mitigation in Davidson County, uh, provided it meets staff approval. And then the uh, caliper requirement and the removal of the ash trees. Yeah, that's, that's right, which was in the original motion. That's correct. Any discussion on this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, the motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Now let's move on to the fourth matter on the agenda, which is Harmony at Bellevue. Uh, I assume everyone's here now. Wonderful. And um, because uh, not all of the applicants' representatives were here at the time, let's go ahead and read the, the opening motion. Or, right, well, yeah, let's read it just in case. Our opening statement to the applicant. If you're not satisfied with the decision made by the Stormwater Management Committee, you may appeal the decision by filing for a writ of centurion with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the committee's decision. You are advised to seek the independent advice of legal counsel to assure that your appeal is filed with a, within a timely matter and that all procedural requirements have been satisfied. Thank you very much. With that, we'll turn to staff uh, for a summary of the variance request. Case number 20180031, Harmony at Bellevue, located at 8234 Highway 100. Council District is number 35. And the representative is Dave Rosenberg. The applicant's request is to allow the following, construction, installation, and maintenance of a multi-use path, green strip, left turn lane, and culvert extension that disturbs the stream buffer, continuous mowing and maintenance of a portion of the buffer in order to maintain the site triangle. 
The appellant is James Forbes of Bellevue, Illinois, Alabama, I guess, Investors, LLC. Uh, the representative is Wes McGill, Reagan Smith and Associates. The comments are as follows. Stormwater staff had no comments. Codes had no comment provided. Planning, uh, the site is zoned AR2A and they defer to stormwater for review. Greenways defers to decision of stormwater management committee. Thank you. With that, we'll turn it over to the applicant for a presentation. Thank you. Thank you for giving us some time this morning to talk to you about this project. I'm Laura Jones with Reagan Smith. This is Michelle Sines with Smith Packet. We have Scotty Burnick with Reagan Smith. We have Justin Newman with Smith Packet and Eric Parle with Reagan Smith. Um, we're going to be talking to you about the Harmony at Bellevue. It is an independent and assisted living retirement community, and it is located within the major and collector street plan. Do you have the ability to? You're the one doing it. Okay. Um, so the major and collector street plan with Metro um, designates the multi-use path for this particular section of Highway 100. Um, you can see the typical section here that's provided in the major and collector street plan. That multi-use path requires a 12-foot paved surface with an 8-foot minimum green space. And that is the reason that we are asking for a variance. In order to meet the requirements of the multi-use path, we need to construct a path along the entire frontage of the property along one, Highway 100. This will result in a stream buffer disturbance in the northern and southern buffers and a request for continuing mowing and maintenance for our site distance triangle. During our traffic study, it was determined that there's an existing left turn lane on Highway 100 that needs to be extended to this development to provide appropriate turning movements and the extension of the left turn lane and the entrance to the development is what um, prompts the site distance triangle. That I'll show you on a later slide, it, it's kind of highlighted in pink. But uh, let's see, go to the last slide. Can you guys, can you see the pink highlighting? I'm, I'm sorry, the next, the, you can see other direction. There you go, that one. I don't know if you guys can see the pink highlighting on that, um, where that site distance triangle is. But if you have your overall sheet, you're on sheet C3.0. Okay, so we'll move to the next slide. Um, this is a zoomed in look at the northern buffer. This has a 30 foot zone one buffer. There's an existing 48 inch culvert. Our proposed plan is to extend that existing 48 inch culvert and the fill slope um, needed to extend that culvert in order to accommodate the multi-use path and the left turn lane. Um, the buffer disturbance is shown in green and that includes, um, we're including the area all the way up to the existing edge of pavement, the existing asphalt of the existing roadway. So a good portion of that is obviously in right away, and then you see the grading that's happening on the, um, on the developed site. Um, we have a large bioretention area adjacent to, but not encroaching on that buffer zone. Um, so all of our water quality treatment for the site is happening outside the buffer zone. We have a natural discharge point, which will generate um, that treated stormwater will have an opportunity to dissipate across that existing buffer. Um, there is one significant tree that we are making sure we maintain and protect. Um, this area is primarily invasive species with the exception of the, the one really good tree there. And as we'll discuss in a minute, our mitigation plan um, requires extensive removal of the invasive species, revegetating with riparian vegetation, including trees and shrubs, as well as a riparian vegetation mix. Um, any questions about this north part before we move on to the next one? I do. Yes. Like on that 48-inch uh, pipe, I guess, that you're talking about, where it mm -hmm. has 29, is, that, is there an invert elevation in there? Do you know what that is, or would anybody know what that would be? We do have them in the roadway section. There's a 578.87, if okay. that's correct. Okay. It's just North 
downstream structure. The junction box that we're adding at the current covert inverter will be. Uh, the, the headwall at 29. I see you're putting a headwall there. Right? Well, it's, it's different on the roadway. Oh, okay. It's the same. I just didn't know if that slope needed to be extended like you're showing right there. If, there's, if you actually have a headwall that could pull it back. That's, that was, that was the, the crux of my question. You've got all that slope embankment there that goes into it's this. on the existing uh, stream bank slope, and then it's just wherever that tube, that grading ended up to meet that, is where it fell. We're, and uh, part of the reason we were sloping it down is for the 12 foot multi use path instead of having a drop off. Okay. It made sense from a safety standpoint okay. to have that transition zone. Yeah, I was wondering uh, why you couldn't do a wall or something or have an extended head mm -hmm. wall. Or, it, it didn't look like to me that that where you're tying into this here is probably four feet deep. So I'm sort of doubting the contours the way they were showing. So, but that answers my question. Thank you. Anything else on this section before we move on to that one? Obviously, we can come back to this. Okay, we'll move to our next slide then. So this shows the um, southern buffer. Uh, this buffer is a 75-foot buffer from top of bank. Uh, we went through extensive um, conversations with staff and the Corps of Engineers and determined um, to use a 75-foot buffer from the top of bank on this project. Uh, that buffer disturbance you can see in green. Um, we have two trees that we determined to be very um, critical to maintain in that existing buffer zone, and we have located our grading and our multi-use path around that in order to protect and preserve those. Additionally, we'll be planting others, but we felt like it was important to keep those um, trees in place, so you can see that our grading kind of works around those existing trees. Um, additionally, you do have the existing roadway, um, that buffer disturbance going all the way to the existing asphalt for grading purposes as well. Um, the buffer, excuse me, the multi-use path will be ending at the property line. Uh, we worked with planning on this multi-use path um, to make sure that in the future when they are prepared to continue this, that they'll be able to cross the stream with a perpendicular crossing. Had we ended our path differently or aligned it differently, it would have resulted in a skewed crossing of the stream and we feel like it's critical to have as little disturbance as possible when they get ready to cross the stream. So we'll not be crossing the stream with this development, but in the future that sets them up um, in a good position to do that. Um, as part of this, there is a um, another large bioretention area that's treating all of our stormwater runoff, and you can see that that is discharging into that buffer zone and will have sheet flow before reaching the stream. Any specific questions about this one? We'll get an opportunity. Yes. Okay, so this shows our overall landscaping plan, and um, it shows a little better highlighted the area in pink, which is our site distance. The area in pink is the area that we're requesting for continuous mowing and maintenance. That's the area along the roadway, and um, as you turn into the entrance, that's needed to maintain that appropriate site distance. As you can see, we have extensive planting and vegetation throughout the entire property. We also have a um, pedestrian walkway because this is a um, retirement community. We want to encourage some walking space for the constituents and we want to encourage them to come to this buffer zone. The pedestrian walkway does not encroach upon the buffer zone like the multi-use path does, but it does allow them to come down to that water resource and kind of draw people into that. I'll show you some pictures in a minute. We feel like that southern water resource is a feature for the site. We want to enhance that feature. Um, we're doing a lot to enhance that buffer and really make it um, somewhere that people want to come and see. Um, and understand the benefit of the quality of that resource. Um, in our mitigation plan, we have our total disturbance um, is 0 0.24 acres. That includes any area that we're grading or revegetating. Um, but our mitigation plan is 0 0.36 acres. So we are actually adding some additional buffer space um, and some mitigation that wasn't there before along those waterways. Um, 
We have 17 additional trees above our TDU requirements that we are putting in the buffer area. And if you go to the next slide, you can see we have some very specific um, species of trees called out for our mitigation planting, as well as some very specific notes regarding that mitigation, mitigation planting and our riparian planting mix. And we've worked with staff um, to make sure that the riparian planting mix that we are using is exactly what they want. Um, just wanted to give you an updated status on all of our other permits and approvals. We have received our TDEC ARAP and we have received our Corps of Engineer 404 permit for the um, extension of the culvert. Um, planning has reviewed the site plan and determined that it is compliant with the UDO as submitted. They are obviously waiting on the decision of the Stormwater Management Committee. And we have been working with stormwater technical review. The initial technical review is complete and we will be addressing all of their comments and working with them um, after the decision of the stormwater management committee has been made. Additionally, we are working with the fire department um, to review some of the existing codes and clarifying some of the requirements. If during the discussions with the fire marshal, it is determined that there needs to be a second entrance, that will not impact these stream buffers. We have already determined that that would not impact these stream buffers and we would not need to come back before you um, with another impact, so. Um, Thank you. Sorry, no. here's some site photographs and if you wanna click through those, nothing specific. I just wanted to show that the existing site has been primarily mowed and maintained over time. There's very limited vegetation on the site. This shows you looking at the buffer. Um, if you'll move to the next one, Rebecca. Um, this is the southern crossing. As you can see, it's a pretty significant water course. Um, and one more slide down. You can see, um, even though there is limited riparian vegetation right there, it is a, a significant water course and we feel the need to protect and preserve that. And that's also one of the reasons why we wanna bring people into that area. It is a very picturesque stream. So in summary, um, we feel like we have some existing con site constraints with our topography, our location on Highway 100, as well as our regulatory requirements for the multi-use path and our safety and turning radius for the left turn lane. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone here from the public to speak in opposition to or in favor of the, the requested variance? Seeing none, we'll turn it over to um, the committee for questioning and discussion. But my first question is, are, are all the um, disturbances required due to Metro requirements along Highway 100? Yes, that is correct. Okay, thank you, that's all I have. I need to recuse myself from this case. You're welcome to. <laughs> uh, I'd like to see the slides again. I think it was, it was C3, 4 or something. No, um, it was an enlargement. Um, I think it's the next one. Yeah, that one right there. Okay. So I noticed that, like, uh, I see this uh, walkway, and um, it's fairly close to this. Is this a stream buffer here? This is what we're looking at? So the, 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 the stream is... All right. Yes. So, but the, no, now I'm looking, it's, it's shaded yellow. Yes, the entire yellow area. Okay. <clears throat> and so, it, and, I, and, and, and a part of this area that's the south of this walk has some grading within this yellow area. I don't know why that's necessary. And, and so I'm, I'm, I mean, it seems like that could be avoided, I, I guess is my question. See how, sort of, see how those contours sort of push out? This is north of the tree. So the, well, if, if, if straight up and down is north, and I'm not sure. Yeah. So to the west of that, you've got some grading that comes into, the, into that buffer. I'm wondering if, why, why that's necessary. Sure. It looks like if it's based upon the path, the path could simply be shifted a little bit further to the west. So we uh, had some initial conversations with uh, stormwater staff about providing this scenario where the detention, bottle retention on our side doesn't sheet flow over the sidewalk. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, as a result, um, in order to get the water to drain appropriately, we had to lift that walk up slightly to prevent that scenario. Uh, and that, I think that's what you'll, you'll see there causing some of that grading within that, just that northern area. No. It's minor. It's just something I noticed, and I guess I'll let everybody else see as well. I mean, it seems to me that that path could, there's plenty of room in there, it looks like, based upon these contours, to avoid that grading within that buffer in that, in that area. So it's something I'm pointing out. Um, I think you've done a great plan. I think you've done a really thorough job in presenting this. You've done better than most applicants do. And, and laying out all your uh, your reasoning and for the for your variance and your hardships, I think you've done a great job. It's just a minor thing that I see that I think could be could avoid uh, a disturbance within that buffer. Yeah, I just want to add that all future applicants would benefit by studying your all's presentation. So it was it was almost checklist esque in its in its style <laughs> that harkens back to a prior conversation then okay so um yeah i guess i want to ask staff why we can't sheet flow water across the sidewalk to avoid that extra grading there it, it was actually a comment from public works um that they don't allow the sheet flow of stormwater across the multi-use pass and i think staff can speak to that that's correct. That's often a comment that we hear from Public Works is not to allow, because of freezing conditions, water to sheet flow over and create a danger potentially to pedestrians. But there's enough room. I to just swell on the opposite side, penetrate the side. Well, I mean, there's a lot of things I think you can do there. To, if, if you think it's important to preserve that buffer, I think it can be done. Yeah, you know, in the context of a retirement community, I guess I could see that. Uh, but I don't know where you can avoid that most anywhere around town, frankly. Um, you don't see many sidewalks elevated above grade in most places, even when they're newly constructed. But in this case, uh, does the owner have a desire to make sure that, I mean, how many people are going to go out and walk when there's ice on the ground or snow uh, on the ground? The applicant would request the opportunity to work with staff to minimize that okay. impact. Okay. I think, I, I absolutely agree, yeah. Roy. I think yeah. that we can um, improve that. Um, I, I want that opportunity to work yeah, with staff to minimize that. I think it's minor. You've got all kinds of room to work here. You can vary the location. You, you, you can do that. And I think that that small area, you know, we are a water quality board, and I think that's what we're supposed to be doing. And so if we can find ways to uh, reduce uh, encroachment into these buffers, that's what we need to do. And so um, if you would volunteer to do that, I think that'd be great. I appreciate it very much. Absolutely. We'll be happy to do that. And, and similarly, I, I, I just have to feel a need to be thorough. Um, you, you, you mentioned your sight lines, and, and I'm assuming that your, your ingress to the site is there purely because of sight distance issues. In other words, you couldn't flip-flop it to avoid that encroachment because of the sight distance. That's Sorry. correct. Okay. Um, we looked at multiple locations, and that is okay. the, the only place to put it to okay. meet our tra traffic okay. and safety needs. So that checks off my thoroughness points. So. Um, additionally, we, you know, we were really trying to um, minimize the impact to the southern water course, um, and so. Good job, guys. Thanks. It's a whole lot easier to consider these when people are really transparent about their needs, constraints, and opportunities. So. I think I'll just go ahead and make a motion that uh, this uh, plan be approved as submitted with the exception of uh, the applicant working with staff to reduce the encroachment within the uh, stream buffer uh, on the, the south portion of the site, on the south portion of the site in the, in the proximity of a proposed, a proposed sidewalk. That's my motion. I'll second the motion. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? I appreciate the native plant selections too. Seeing no discussion, uh, mm -hmm. take a vote on the motion. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs>
Now we'll move to items of business. Anything to propose? Sorry. Uh, I would, I was wondering if we might be able to put all of, instead of having like 10 or 13 emails, if, if there's a way we can use an FTP site or something to upload all of our agenda documentation. So That's a good question. Mr. Mishu, is there a way for us to just put it on an FTP site and one, we, one email where we can go access it if we want? We do have an FTP site. Um, as, as I hear, it's uh, overcrowded with a lot of stuff that doesn't get deleted that's supposed to be deleted. But we will, uh, we will work with our internal staff to see that we, we have something available for you guys in the near future. Google folders can be used and you can limit who gets access to it. Well, we're the government. Sometimes we have additional restrictions yeah, that we can't. I was going to say, I'm not sure. <laughs> we, we, we will find a way to, uh, to help. Something to look at. All right. Good discussion. Any other issues for new business? No, it's just the end of the year. I just want to wish everybody a good holiday. But um, and I also want to thank, thank staff. The staff really does a great job. They really do. They're very diligent in what they do and passionate about it, and I appreciate it. I'll second that. I'll third it. Um, holiday, holiday wishes also. Um, good point. Uh, anything else? Seeing none. Uh, anyone want to make a motion to adjourn? Move we adjourn. Got a motion. Got a second. All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Merry Christmas. Thank you. We're done. 2019. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.